Hello everybody, I'm Aspen, I'm an embodiment coach, and today I want to talk about something that is so fundamental and part of so many practices and so powerful that it deserves its own video. And it is simply attention, deepening our attention. So I want to talk about what that is, unpacking that, how to put that into practice and to play, and why this might be really valuable for you. So our attention is freaking powerful <laughs> and our ability to use it for ourselves <laughs> instead of against ourselves is also very powerful. So when I'm speaking about deepening your attention and having that discipline of attention, using the mind to really drop into whatever it is. So since I'm an embodiment coach and everything that I speak about here and do is through the lens of the body, I'm specifically talking about deepening attention into the body. So a place that this might be very valuable is, for instance, right, you're stuck in something, you're obsessively thinking, you're stressed out, you're frustrated, you're funk, you're just in a funk. We can stay there, right? And it's just kind of like this thing that is everywhere and around and we can't shift it and we can't get out of it and just kind of keeps festering when we can begin to practice and train ourselves to deepen our attention to go underneath whatever the story and the narrative and the kind of <laughs> um, surface top where we're swimming to deepen under the surface and deepen our attention into the sensations in the body. So I talk a lot about this, and I talk a lot about this because it is, it is everything. Our ability to drop into physical sensations in the body, when we do that, when we contact physical sensations, we're directly contacting life. When we tend to those sensations, we are tending to life. And it is bringing us into the truth of this moment right here, right now. So we're not looking through so much of the lens of the past or looking at it through the different stories that we tell. We're actually getting a chance to see it as truth and to have that truth as medicine. And from that place, there is choice. So one of the things that embodiment, I think, really gave me was options, choice freedom. And I feel like many of us deeply desire that. So when we are relating to ourselves somatically from the body, from this physical body, we have a whole new way of relating to life. We're not just stuck trying to manage and control and kind of override what actually is true, what actually is alive in the body. So we're always kind of in this turmoil, this war with ourselves, and we can create a lot of stories about that, right? Like, I should be able to just get out of this. Like, I, I, I want to be happy. Like, what's wrong with me, right? And it can just like, whoo, go down there. And then that's where you live. And that's the story and the shape that your body takes. And then you're out there living life from that conclusion. And so a simple practice of learning to deepen your attention so some ways that this can actually look. Um, when you're feeling any type of um, activation or energy in the body, or you're noticing that like you're really fixated on this, this person or this thing that happened or like this, this just thing that's stuck, right? Any kind of stuckness that's in your body. Beginning to deepen your breath and deepen your attention down into the body. So can I feel physical sensations in the body? And that in itself is a practice and something that you can and will get better at if you do practice. So heat, trembles, tingles, numbness, blank space, nothing, right? There's a lot of different ways that these sensations can take place and that you can start to be able to identify and feel them. And the body, <laughs> the beautiful thing about the body is it's not going to let you off the hook. Like you can have all the positive thoughts in the world and you can do all the mindset things and all the like reframe things. 
But if that's all just here on the surface and underneath your body is still pissed or filled with grief or filled with rage, that's still going to be there and you're going to constantly be feeling this. I mean, it can come as so many things, right? Exhaustion because it takes energy to kind of continue to have that under the surf under the surface. It can come up as wow, I just blew up at that person. It can come up as this kind of gnawing ache underneath this dread. And so some ways to put this into play are yes, in the moment to start to get curious about what actually is underneath. Can I deepen my attention and my breath and just feel what's here? Also, when it's a little bit safer, where you can start to build that trust, just like going to the gym, you can start to build that strength. So that looks like meditation or simply connecting to your breath for a few moments or going for a walk where you're really dropping underneath and deepening your attention to what is, to this present moment. Because when we bring our attention to this moment, this is the only moment <laughs> that something new and different can occur that anything can happen. So it's a really great place to get to if we do want to shift. And to talk briefly about the shifting, it's important to remember that we're not just deepening our attention because we want to get out of this feeling. It's perfectly natural. Like it's a totally human thing to want to get out of suffering, to feel better, to not feel like crap, to not feel like a loser. Completely understandable. And it's really important to meet that, to feel that, so that that can have more space, more room, and can move as opposed to it just being there. Because it's gonna be there. And by bringing our awareness and our breath and our attention to it, that's when we start to be able to have some choice and perhaps some freedom. So, when we go into and deepen our attention to what is, we might find a whole mess of crap. Like, I'm not saying that this is easy at all. That's why it's incremental. It's moment to moment. It's okay, for this one breath, can I feel what's happening in my stomach? For this one breath, can I feel temperature in my body? And it's really moment to moment. That's how you build trust. That's how you build capacity. Um, and that's how you start to give space for things to move, to undo, and for you to get back more of you, more of your energy, and then be living from just a greater wholeness, a more expansive sense of self that has freedom and choice and options. Right? That's kind of like <laughs> what we're going for. And so to touch briefly on when it's really hard. So sometimes when we deepen our attention and we expect like we're just going to feel some, some pissed offness and instead we feel a huge, deep, almost endless cavity of grief, that can be really challenging. And it's important to remember that as best as we can, we can begin to learn to have the capacity to meet that too, to allow that too, moment to moment, right? We're not just going to dive in and just like live in there and just swim around in the murkiness and be there forever. In this breath, can I contact that grief, those sensations, and really getting into deepening the attention underneath. So we like to make a lot of stories like, okay, this is grief and this is here because of that. And we like to get into the whys and all of that stuff has a place. But for this particular lens in which I desire to speak through and look through, we're really fascinated more with the life that is here, the sensations that is here, the energy that is here. And so this grief, we don't even have to name it. We can just feel it as sensations in the body. And this is a practice, this is a new language, this is a new way of relating to yourself and to life. And the important thing is, is that in that moment, you are choosing to turn towards yourself. You are not abandoning yourself in that feeling. And that's what really matters. So it may not sound like a lot to the mind, like, oh, you were only able to breathe and be with yourself for 
15 seconds and then you went off and you reacted and you do the thing you always do. <laughs> it matters. From a neurological standpoint, <laughs> from a body standpoint, it matters. And so choosing to meet yourself, to deepen your attention and to be with and allow as best you can what unfolds. And practice. You can practice this whenever. You can practice it when you're not activated, when you're not feeling like crap, right? Can I deepen my intention, my attention into the pleasurable sensations of this grass on my toes, on the sunlight, on my face? Can I deepen my attention into my body as I exercise, as I move, as I, as I breathe? So it really is a muscle that we can train and that can be our greatest asset. Because where where attention goes, energy flows, right? And so to be able to start to point that spotlight into things that allow us to connect deeper, to get parts of ourselves back, to create more freedom, and also to deepen our capacity to know what is true so that from a place of connection and alignment, we can take action. We can respond. Like, the more that we deny kind of parts and pieces of ourselves and are fragmented, the more we deny people and fragment off from people as well. And like bad, good, black, white, like everything is right, wrong, right? Like we start to think in very like black and white terms. And so the more integrated that we can be within our bodies and the more inclusive we can be within our bodies with all the parts and pieces, then the more that that reflects outward, outward and, um, I mean, I think the world could use a little bit more of that unity, right? Unification. <laughs> so know that this isn't just a practice for you. It is always what you heal in the individual heals in the collective. And so it is also for the world. So to leave you with some actionable steps that you can actually begin to try this on. Um, one, I have lots of downloadable pocket practices and guided meditations and audios on my website, which help deepen embodied awareness and help focus and strengthen your attention. Um, also, pausing, the beautiful practice of the pause. So throughout your day, this could look like setting a timer on your phone, or this could look like um, some kind of other cue, like, oh, after lunch, I blah, 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 like you can add it to something else that you already do all the time when I get into the car. So beginning to practice a pause where you just do a check-in, where you deepen your attention into your body. I like to put my hand on my heart because that kind of anchors me into like shunk, okay? Because I'm up here living in this virtual reality. <laughs> shunk. So to feel, or even into your hips, into your pelvis or your feet, right? To just feel for 30 seconds, 60 seconds. Can I deepen my breath? Can I deepen my attention to what's really here? To what's really true? To what is alive in my body? What physical sensations are here? So practicing that pause. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is <laughs> finding the value for you. Finding the why for you. Why does this matter? Why is this important? Because it's unfreaking comfortable okay, to sit and to feel this story of not enoughness. It's not enjoyable. <laughs> it's not something that like, I'm signing up for. Like, yes, please, I'll be the first in line to do that all day. No. And so to figure out why does this matter? So for me, I know that by deepening my attention and having these more foundational practices in my life, it allows me to be here for life, to have a deeper, richer experience of being alive. It allows me to feel more of myself, the fullness and wholeness of me. And it allows me to feel freer. So freedom in relationship to the emotions and the waves that happen inside of me. Freedom in how I choose to relate to others and, and how I move about in the world. More freedom to just be me. Freedom to have boundaries, to say no. And freedom to feel. I know that for me, there was a lot of just not feeling. And it worked for not feeling the bad stuff, but it also meant that I didn't feel any of the good stuff. Just kind of this numb, not really here. 
unlived life feeling, which sucked, right? I feel like that sucks more. <laughs> and so the thing is, is like, it is uncomfortable to drop in and feel, but we're dealing with it anyway. Like it's gonna show up anyway. The grief's gonna pop up. The rage is gonna pop up. The, the not enoughness is going to pop up. So we may as well get some freaking freedom out of it, right? <laughs> so that is what I have for you today on attention and deepening your attention. And if you desire to dive into this stuff a lot more and have some support, I have monthly memberships that are amazing, an embodiment practice membership, a meditation membership. I also have um, things on Insight Time or live yoga classes and meditation classes and downloadable resources and podcasts and blog and one-on-one -on -one embodiment coaching. Right? I have a bajillion things out there for you, all in the name of embodiment and empowerment. And know that you are so not alone. So all of this stuff, all of this human stuff, we all got it and we're all in this together and sending you so much love. Comment, let me know what you think. Um, if you have any questions, subscribe, and I hope to see you soon. Mwah.